Hey everyone, welcome back to the videos. Uh, in this video, I actually figured out while editing that I converted a 28 spline to a 31 spline axle uh, just by changing out the internals. Uh, it was actually cheaper for us to get a 28 spline axle out of a regular Crown Vic or Town Car than it was to find one from a police interceptor. Uh, come to find out the police interceptor axles are actually very high priced and I was able to reuse the ring gear pinion carrier get brand new axle shafts because we needed those and a bearing kit and I was actually able to build you know swap parts and build this for under what we could get and have a axle shipped to us a used one so it worked out awesome hopefully this helps you guys out wish I had better light here but I'm working on getting more lights in the shop uh, first thing I need to do is pull the sway bar off or not I will leave it on the other one's got the sway bar on it. it looks like the same size as the click, same location, so we'll leave that on. First, we're going to start taking off these 10 13 millimeter bolts for the diff cover, and then I like to use a uh, pretty solid gasket scraper that I got from Snap On. You can hit it with a hammer, get between the cover and the case, and pop the cover off. You see here now I'm removing the carrier caps. Uh, make sure you mark those caps if you're reusing the axle assembly. Then I have to remove the carrier pin, eight millimeter bolt that holds it in. Then I'll slide the pin out. Then you'll see me push, remove the rotors, and then push the axles in to remove the C-clips, and then you can remove the axle shafts. Okay, you saw that I just removed the carrier. Now I'm working on removing the pinion flange. Removed the nut for the pinion flange. Now I've got a puller that I'm going to pull the pinion pin flange off with. And once that I do that, you can tell the bearings are so loose, normally they hold the pinion in kind of tight, it dropped right out. So uh, the bearings were pretty shot. Okay, I just got the old rear end disassembled that's over here to my right. Uh, I didn't move it at all, but uh, sitting here is the new rear end, but I need to take the guts out of this one, get rid of them, and take the uh, carrier and pinion, and then the new axles, and put it in this one. Uh, since we're going with a, basically, a, we're swapping from one typical rear end to another one, uh, as long as I don't see anything that jumps out at me as being different, I see no reason, since I'm putting brand new bearings in, that I can reuse the shims from this one. We'll see how everything is. We'll see how everything lines up. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll check the pattern just to make sure everything's good. Being a rear or a used ring gear and pinion, the pattern is probably going to be a little weird anyway. It's, it's really weird with uh, things... When you get a ring gear and pinion that has been matched, you know, been came out of, a, let's say, just a factory car, and you check a uh, wear pattern on it, the wear, wear pattern doesn't always look the greatest. It can be uh, maybe a little towards the heel or the toe. Uh, you can do marking compound, and it doesn't look, look that great, but that doesn't mean that it's bad or anything. Um, so really putting it together in here and checking the wear pattern, all I'm going to be looking for is make sure it's not way towards the heel, way, way towards the uh, toe. I guess I could have checked it in this one to begin with before tearing it down. But, I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, but I think, I think uh, we'll be able to put this together and not have any issues at all. I didn't record tearing this axle housing down. Uh, you already watched me do the other one. So this one, right now, I'm driving the inner new inner pinion bearing race in and then I'll be driving the outer pinion race in the housing uh, and then I'll move on to pulling the old bearing off the pinion taking the old shim from the pinion putting it back on the pinion and installing the new inner pinion 
bearing on the pinion and then we'll go into and saw the pinion in the housing uh, tightening the nut down with an impact and then what I'll do is keep you'll see me keep checking the rotational torque on the pinion bearings that way we can make sure we get the correct pinion uh, preload that way our bearings wear in correctly and don't get loose and don't wear out prematurely So what I'm showing you here is this pinion seal, and this is almost every, any crank seal, pinion seal, any seal like this that's got a spring on the back side here, pack a little grease in there, and that helps when you're, you've installed the seal, or you're installing the seal, or in this case you install it, and then put the pinion up in there and the bearing can contact. If anything moves around, it doesn't pop that spring out. That way the spring stays retained, and you don't have an oil leak down the road or instantly. On seals like this that don't have the little ring on them, that's the that sealing ring, that goo or whatever it is, I like to add some Loctite like this. That way it adds to the external side of the seal that contacts the housing. Because I have seen seals leak in that area before. Because the housings aren't always perfect. So that lets the Loctite seal any of the gaps around the uh, seal. Make sure you don't have any leaks. Building the differentials, some manufacturers recommend putting some silicone inside on the splines between the pinion and the flange. Some don't. Uh, it just helps again with any sealing capability because oddly enough, the fluid can go between the pinion and the flange and work its way up. Some uh, some nuts you can see sometimes have a uh, some uh, sealant on the face of the nut where it contacts the flange I don't believe this one did and I just a lot of times just go ahead and put it in there it most likely helps uh, lube the flange going on but also helps with sealing long term that way you don't get any uh, leaks coming out the flange past the nut and in the u-joint area and then it looks like you have a u-joint slinging grease got some of the play out of the pinion now I'm checking the pinion bearing preload right here you can see it's moving pretty easy I know I got five inch pounds that go around finally I tighten the pinion bearing or the pinion out a little bit more and here I'm spinning it around trying to get some lube on the bearings that way we get an even turning and if I remember remember correctly we got 20 inch pounds I still want to get higher since we're brand new bearings and that way once they break in it falls back into uh, the range specification that Ford recommends if I remember correctly that's uh, anywhere from 12 to 25 inch pounds okay so the spec is actually 16 to 29 inch pounds and you can see here I'm spinning the Pinion, getting some grease back on the bearings and I actually get 35 inch pounds which is awesome so I'm actually over 
spec, so 29 is the highest what Ford recommends. I'm over that, so when these bearings start to break in, they're going to fall back within the range, so we should have a great running differential. finally get the carrier all the way down in the case and you'll hear the sound difference of the uh, of me hitting on it and you'll notice that it gets more uh, solid and pingier and that tells you the carrier is as far down in the case as it can go. Okay, so we've uh, we got the differential in. I got to torque these uh, bearing caps to 77 foot pounds. And earlier you saw me tightening the pinion nut. This has a crush sleeve, as you saw me put on the pinion earlier. And there's no real torque set, uh, spec for that nut. What it goes off of then, what you saw me doing was a rotational torque. And like I've talked about in other videos, that rotational torque is key for uh, the pinion bearings and everything lasts in a long time and if you get way too tight you're going to wear your bearings out and then you're going to get a lot of slop if you're not tight enough it's not going to retain when those bearings break in it's not going to retain the tension either so uh, i like to get I th normally bearing if i remember correctly bearing preloads anywhere from 25 to 25 to 15 I think spec I like to go on the high side I shot for 30 and so when those bearings break in they're going to stay in that range that uh, the Ford engineers made or set of that 20 15 to 25 and that way if I had set it at say 25 it probably drop down and still be within range but from experience and talking and being around other techs over the years they say when they set them up tight they have a differential that lasts a lot longer and stays with inspect a lot longer so uh, that I mean that's the goal you want to make some do a repair do a fix that lasts a long time so that is what I did there so we're going to torque this to 77 But again, like I was saying before, being that these are used gears, pattern's not always going to show up correctly, so. Some weird marking compound. Came in this kit I bought from O'Reilly. Okay, if we look here, 
and lights throwing us off. Here's the drive side. And the drive side is very clean. We're not, we're hitting a little on, I think this is the toe side. Could be wrong. And this is the heel. But we're, we have a little left here, but we're, we're contacting that whole gear all the way up. And I really like that. And then on this side, it's opposite. This is the reverse side, which really doesn't make a big difference. But being that they're used gears, it's hard to say. But we're not seeing anything drastic. And we're seeing a good contact of the teeth on both sides. I really like it. It matches the wear pattern actually on the other side quite a bit. So if you look at the areas, if we look at the original wear pattern, you can see there's a little bit of black up here is where the gear hasn't worn as much. See, I can't wipe it away or anything. But it's more so on the, I think that's the toe, on this side. So it's, the gear is wearing in this area more. And then if we look on this side, we can see a similar pattern where it's shinier down here and up along. You can see that there. I like that a lot. Yeah, you can see this tip here in that area on these gears where it's not getting worn as much. And that's exactly how that pattern is. So I think that'll be great. It might make a little noise right off the bat. But once those gears get some miles on them, I think everything will be great. I, I like the way that is. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to put our axle shafts in on both sides. And uh, once I get that done, get this surface cleaned up, get the pan back on it, and get this thing ready to go back in the car. Okay, here I'm removing the old axle seal and bearing and then I'll install the new axle seal and, or bearing then seal. And I do that on both sides. I think I cut out uh, one side. I'm sorry I didn't get a better camera angle. Uh, at this point I've spent a lot of time on this and I don't want to drag this out to be a super long video. Uh, I'll try to make another video down the road of me just doing, showing you guys just how to change out axle bearings and seals. here is the stud on top of the differential housing. This is, I believe this stud holds what's called the watch link uh, 
arms on and you can see there's like a lever in the center and some arms that connect to it and that stud came out of the original housing and I decided to just go ahead and leave all that in and I threaded it into this housing just to, I felt like it wanted a laser doing that. Okay guys, we, uh, you just saw me filling up the rear differential. I didn't show everything else just because it was putting wheels on, stuff like that. Um, the, what was I say? Oh, on almost every job, I, especially one like this where you can see almost everything you touch, uh, you know, every, all the bolts you need to tighten up, everything like that, I always do a once over. Just kind of look at this. Okay, did I get that? Did I get that? It just kind of helps you out. That way, when you're driving down the road, you're not going, oh, did I tighten that? Oh, did I do that? Or did I do that? It's just, you can catch a lot of stuff. I've done it to myself where I, I put a bolt in, but I didn't actually tighten it. Or I started the nut on a bolt, and I didn't actually tighten it. But it's just little things like that that can help you out drastically. So anyway, now I'm gonna go take this thing for a drive, make sure everything's good, make sure the brakes work, make sure everything's just, it feels normal and everything, but, uh, Unless I run into anything, uh, this will probably be the end of the video. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Hopefully you enjoy seeing this. Uh, I don't know how much it would help exactly anybody, but you can see that uh, swapping gears from one housing to another isn't that big of a deal. Uh, it's not as hard as a lot of people think it is. So uh, if you enjoy this, enjoy my videos, I'd really appreciate it if you'd uh, like this video. You know, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, is there something I could have done different, maybe speed it up, or is there something with the videos you think I should do to make the videos a little more entertaining? Because uh, I'm still trying to learn and figure out what works best and what you guys enjoy. Uh, because I enjoy doing this, I enjoy making the videos, but I want to make sure you all enjoy this. So, uh, again, thank you very much, and I'll see you guys in the next video.